Hey everyone, welcome back to Let's Play The Binding of Isaac. Quite recently we've unlocked the Polaroid for real, and uh, I haven't yet had the opportunity to show off what it can do, like the most important function it serves. So I'm going to play as Maggie today, hopefully I'll get to show it off. Maggie starts with uh, one extra red heart compared to Isaac, and an item the Yum Heart which uh, allows you to recover one full red heart of damage and I think it recharges every four rooms. She's also a bit slower and she doesn't start with any bombs, keys, or money. I believe she has the same base damage and base damage multiplier. Well, you can't have a base damage multiplier, it's just a damage multiplier. Um, I think she has a 1.0 multiplier but it might be like 0.9 something, I don't know. So this is a cramped room and trites suck, but Anyway, uh, the idea that I'm going to work with is hopefully I can leverage her extra health, especially compared to someone like Cain or Judas, um, and make use of deals with the devil more effectively in order to uh, buff her significantly and make this a, an easy, successful run. I'm going to use the um heart. And then there's a full heart, of course, but I mean, can't count on these things. I'd like to run into a bomb, and that was a bad hit to take. I'd like to run into a bomb, but I'd like to run into two keys more. So, Tinted Rock is why I want the bomb, but one key means I can access one of the two item rooms. We're on Basement XL, which means there are two item rooms, one shop, two bosses, and twice as many rooms as normal. It also counts as both the Basement 1 and the Basement 2, so uh, once I complete this floor, I will head straight to the caves. Uh, okay, soul hearts are good. I probably should have left that there for a little while. Second tinted rock. So, uh, once again, hoping for a bomb. Two bombs, really. Oh my goodness, why can you jump so far? So, trites are the worst. Just kill them as fast as possible. But, uh, flaming hoppers are also the worst. Of course there's a bomb here, but I cannot get to that. So, three tinted rocks. There are three tinted rocks. So I really, really want some bombs. Pretty badly. And uh, that was just kind of lucky. You probably shouldn't ever back yourself into a corner like I just did, but I was confident that I'd get the kills I needed. Alright, so I'm kind of hoping for the tower world that that's okay but I'm gonna hold on to it I've already found most of everything on this floor I'll take that heart so what am I thinking uh, best case scenario is we get in one of item one of the item rooms we get a bomb item that gives us five bombs allowing us to get all three of those tinted rocks there and uh, then in the other we get something related to damage I think it it's not actually that far out there I mean, these are two relatively common occurrences. Like, they're not rare items that I'm asking for. Especially considering that I'm asking for a range of items that are, you know, again, not uncommon. Well, there's my second key, and I have magically chosen the uh, completely wrong direction for both item rooms. Eh, why not fight a boss? Maybe it'll give me, I don't know, anything. Maybe it'll be the fall and that'd be terrible, but... Monstro, double champion Monstro. Not too hard. Um, pretty much, you just imply normal Monstro strategy. And even when they split up a little, you just keep circle strafing. And you should be able to avoid them. Just keep shooting, but don't worry about hitting. One thing that, uh, unlike the Binding of Isaac subreddit, I'll always say if I give someone advice. Worry more about dodging than landing hits, because you can land hits while dodging, but you can't necessarily dodge while landing hits. So it's all about what you're focusing on. I did take a couple hits here, though. Pretty bad, but... Uh, you know, I've got recharging Yum Heart and such. Alright, Cat of Nine Tails is a uh, shot speed up, which increases the knockback of our tiers and also 
um, pretty much increases range because they travel further in the same amount of time. So uh, it's alright, has its good points. More often than not, I'd rather have a different item, but I'm not going to complain too much. Bombs. Okay, well, I'm going to ignore that. That silly little chest in a chest that almost ruined my day. Of course, it could be great. It could have, like, 12 bombs and 12 keys in it or something. But I think this is pretty great, too. The halo is all stats up. Tears, damage, health, speed, all of it. Really good pickup. I'm really glad I got that. I, I mean, I don't get all stats up that frequently. Even though there are a bunch of all stats up items. But uh, I think that puts us in a pretty good position. I'd say I'm unlikely to get a deal with the devil. Because you can get a deal with the devil at the end of an XL um, second boss. I'd say it's unlikely. A fourth tinted rock. This is... I don't know how I feel about this. I'll take this one because it's the one that's right here. But uh, I don't want to have to abandon three other tinted rocks. So give me one plus one free right now. Well, that's a bomb, so that is far better than not a bomb. Small rock, that's uh, two damage up, one tears up, and one speed down. Uh, this is going really well. Like, this could totally be a good... Um, chest run, which is what I'm trying to show off. So I can now access all of the Tinted Rocks, and uh, other item room is Brother Bobby, which is a familiar that'll shoot along with us, following us around. And uh, I, this is this is really great. I'm super satisfied with the way this run has turned. And there's not another Tinted Rock that I would have to abandon. So I'm saying uh, I will use this key totally to unlock that gold chest back there. Um, I'm thinking ideally... We fight Famine, honestly. Famine um, will drop a cube of meat, which will start us with a ring of protection. That was a waste of my key then, but uh, I couldn't have known that going into that. Anyway, Famine will give us a cube of meat, rotating around us, starting our ring of protection of uh, items that block tears, and some of them that damage enemies. So this should give me some soul hearts, another bomb, that's great. So I was worried for a bit, but now I'm really not. And then this one will pay me, pay my bomb back. But unfortunately, it's just a chest that I can't open. Uh, I don't remember. Was the tinted rock in here? No. Okay. Was it in here? Yes. All right. So how about two soul hearts? Soul heart and bomb again. Well, that's okay. I find myself in the same bomb situation I started, which is, uh, good. I'm happy with that. Alright, Larry Jr. So I can get any old boss drop from this. Could be damage up, could be tears up, could be health up, could be a few other things that I desire or don't desire. Still, Larry Jr. is an easy fight. And he's about to die. Didn't take damage. Health up. Eternal Heart will become a health up. Uh, once I get on to the next floor with it. Let's see what's in the deal with the devil. Uh, Lord of the Pit? You know, why not? I don't think I've collected it yet. I also haven't collected the Parasite, but... Uh, no, I'm not doing it. So I get health up here, and go down to the next floor. I'd say that went really, really well. Let's use the world. And let's go this way to start. So, um, Lord of the Pit just gave me passive flying, and that's all it did. So, I mean, it used to be a pretty great, um, pickup, but, like, before Wrath of the Lamb came out, but now with Wrath of the Lamb, there are, like, 10,000 flying items. So, uh, it's generally not a great pickup. It's something you want to get for free, or not at all, probably, because they're way, way better flying items. Like, some that give you health up, some that give you, uh, spectral tears, lots of stuff. So I've just taken, like, terrible, terrible damage twice on this room. But that's alright. Let's go into the secret room, see what we've got. I half expected it to be uh, Transcendence, which would just give us passive flying as well, and uh, I would have wasted my hearts collecting. 
uh, Lord of the Pit, but, uh, again, new item, gotta collect them all to get, uh, I mean, to unlock Golden God and later Platinum God. So, uh, you know, it's just an investment in my future. Now, of course, there's the possibility that that choice screws over my uh, success in this run, but I really doubt it. I don't think that passive flight is ever something that's going to mess up your run. Dime, so I can definitely go to the shop if I come across another key, but uh, definitely focusing on the item room, for now at least. That was stupid damage. I've been taking a lot of stupid damage this video, but flight should help to mitigate. Alright, so let's see what we got in here. We got Mom's bra. I don't know. <clears throat> Yum Heart seems like a pretty solid item to keep for now. Mom's bra would freeze everything, uh, all the enemies in the room. Allow us to attack them. For, you know, free. Free, pretty much. And I uh, got a key, so I'll go to the shop. If there's the candle, that's what I'm taking. If not, I'd take a compass. I'd take a compass. So a compass shows the uh, location of all the icon rooms, but it doesn't show how many rooms it takes to get there or what the path is. So pretty much, I would just see that there's a boss head right there in the for the boss room, that kind of thing. Now this is one room where uh, flight's great. I love having flight. And thanks to the speed up that I got from the Halo and uh, did I get another speed up? Well, I got a speed down, but speed down from the small rock is a less speed down than you get from a speed up. So, I mean, it's all good. Okay, so I just want to kill the chargers first. And if I uh, hit Chad, that's just a little bonus. Or if Chad hits me, that's the opposite of a bonus, I'd say. But I can recover my health with the um heart. Though, I will say that um, Chad will drop little Chad, and little Chad drops a red heart for a half red heart every two rooms. I might uh, be willing to go drop the yum heart for like mom's bra, for example, for a lot of space bar items, since I'll have the uh, passive health regeneration as opposed to active health regeneration. And no deal with the devil. Uh, I'm gonna go to the curse room, see what we pick up in there, hopefully Sacred Heart. That would be pretty intensely awesome. Uh, yeah, let's do this. Speed up. Okay, I guess that's alright. So, I mean, I'm still feeling really good. Five hearts is a good place to be. Um, the curse room here is going to be free because I can recover my health. Alright, so recover my health. And like I said, I have passive health regeneration now through uh, little Chad. It may be a bad choice, but I think that given my flight, I can um, actively avoid damage pretty well. So we're going to go with this, and this will freeze enemies, like I said. I don't think it's the one that scares them away. But uh, we'll just we'll just go on to the next floor, see how this goes. So that's the compass in action, showing me where all of those rooms are, but not how to get there. And uh, now I would buy the map, but I don't generally like to uh, buy the treasure map anymore without having the compass already. Of course, there is the benefit of the uh, treasure map showing you where the secret room is. And that's possibly really beneficial. The secret room has items like Fetus in a Jar and Epic Fetus. Transcendence, but I don't need Transcendence right now. Because I already have Passive Flight, the exact same effect. Um, Alright, Missing Page is uh, when we get hit, there's a 5% chance that we uh, activate the Necronomicon, which will significantly damage every enemy in the room. Alright, so we're getting enough keys now. The Miter is a great pickup. This is a, an increased chance that any red heart drop will become a soul heart drop, and I definitely, definitely want that. Of course, that won't affect little Chad, because he only drops half red hearts. And even if it did affect him, I think that it would only... Um, I, I, 
well, I, I think that it only affects full red heart drops, so I don't think it could affect um, Little Chad, even if it were, uh, like, able to. I, I, I don't know if I'm making sense there, but I hope you know what I'm trying to say. So Flight makes Charger Rooms really, really easy because you can just, you could lure them, but then you can go over a gap or a rock or something. And uh, that's actually, speaking of uh, going over a rock, that's really the reason that um, I, I significantly appreciate the uh, flight items added in Wrath of the Lamb, because uh, while Spectral Tears did exist before Wrath of the Lamb, you had to collect a Spectral Tears item and a flight item to get flying in Spectral Tears, which is like the best combo in a lot of cases. So, um, Wrath of the Lamb added a few items that are just flight and spectral tears. Like, together as one, and that is great. So, our tarot card here is Judgment. That spawns a beggar. And, uh, I do intend to use it, but first I'm going to, um, go to the shop and see what the shop has for me. If I don't want anything there, then I'll save it until I fight the boss. Well, beat the boss. I'm gonna beat the boss. I promise. I don't promise, but I, I would fully expect to. Anyway, until I beat the boss, and uh, if I get a deal with the devil, uh, then I should be able to show off that um, using a, well, winning at a beggar Okay, so it's greed, nothing in the shop. Winning on a beggar in a deal with the devil room should give you a deal with the devil item. But that's not a 100% of the time thing, it's just a this happens frequently-ish. So I'll try to show that off if I have the opportunity. I definitely have enough money that if I don't win against a beggar, it's, it's a surprise. Beggars you can usually pay off in 10 cents or less. Which is great because you can get 15 cent shop items, or just a lot of items that you can't get for money and or easily. So I explore this just to explore every room for fun, and we fight Fistula, which should be pretty easy. Fistula will uh, split into a bunch of parts, and those parts will split into a couple parts, and uh, those will turn into chargers once you kill them. And uh, I'm doing good enough damage. And I have good enough other stats, speed, range, all that, flight, that I can uh, pretty definitely make this work. I took a hit, but uh, since it was only soul heart damage, it doesn't count against me for getting a deal with the devil. So uh, it might work. I might get this deal with the devil, and I do. Magic 8 Ball is a uh, tears up and a tarot card. Gotta make sure to take Judgment into here. And, oof. Well first, let's just show off this Judgment thing, this beggar. See if he gives me what I want, and then I'm pretty definitely gonna take uh, Guppy's Paw. All right, health up. So that's basically like he gave me Guppy's Paw, which I will then use to turn all of my health into Soul Hearts. That's five times three. So every one red heart turns into five soul or three soul hearts. That means I just got 15 soul hearts. And then I will abandon Guppy's Paw, stick with Mom's Paw, even though I haven't used it yet. So now, um, I'd like to collect the Polaroid, which I will soon. Oh, we might get a Depths XL here, or at least some curse, or it's just Necropolis. Sometimes these things happen. But it is Curse of the Labyrinth, and this is where, um... The compass really gets to shine because it shows me how to, well, generally how to head to both item rooms on an XL floor. And that's usually what you're searching for for the whole, like, the whole of the floor. Oh, that was bad damage. Uh, but we make it up and then a little bit. Look at all this money. Health up, I actually don't want. And uh, once I get the Polaroid, I'll be able to tell you why. If I had kept Guppy's Paw, I would have loved to have gotten that. Um, but I didn't keep Guppy's Paw, and I don't know if I regret that, because, I mean, usually Guppy's Paw is a... I use it once, and then 
I'm set, but sometimes you keep getting health ups. Because, I mean, in a boss challenge room, it is a likelihood that you'll get a um, health up. So we, uh, we got the D20, and I'm going to take this. The D20 allows us to reroll pickups instead of items like the D6 does. So uh, every coin, key, bomb, chest, pill, et et tarot card, those things, you can reroll into other ones of those things. And uh, it can be pretty great if you get, like, an arcade or something, but I can't really make use of an arcade for this uh, purpose in this run because I don't have red hearts to do so with. <sighs> and I, I don't know why I went this way. I should be focusing on the item rooms. Because, I mean, the sooner I get to the item rooms, the sooner I know what kind of advantage I have, the sooner I know what I should be doing. So that's what I'll do. I'll head to the item room, and then I'll head to the shop. No, I'll head to the shop first, because it's closer. But uh, I'm really happy with how this run's going, so I think we're going to see at least some type of success. So once you uh, get in the middle here, just, just come up here, guys. They stop moving at all, except when you um, put them in their use state. So... I mean, I have them all down to the point where a couple hits takes them into the use state immediately. Which is pretty much what you want to be able to say. And I'm getting enough keys. Unfortunately, that wasn't a free path to the item room. Or the shop. So Tammy's head is actually a really good item. I just don't have... Um, well, I'd rather use the D20. I might abandon the uh, D20 soon, though. And then pick up Tammy's head. Tammy's head shoots a uh, 8 tiers, high damage, and increase the damage increases with your damage. Uh, let's just reroll these. Chest. More money. Uh, that means I'll probably fight greed in the shop, unfortunately. So, those, uh, the Tammy's headshots usually kill, like, most enemies in one hit. And it recharges every room, so that's really pretty valuable. And I hate... I, I, I miss the old knight AI. Knights used to be predictable. They didn't turn on a dime. But I have a ton of money. I would love to run into the candle. Then I would definitely just drop the d20 immediately. Because, I mean, again, without an arcade, the d20 is generally not going to turn out to be, you know, tons of free awesome items that you want. More often, it's just going to be, like, whatever. So, the... Jeez. Uh, well, I know how to get to the uh, item room in the shop now. It's at the bottom there. But I'll just finish these rooms off first. So, I mean, the run's going well. I'm not taking that much damage. The Polaroid will make everything much, much better. I'd like to see some more damage, though. Or at least, like, another familiar. Something like that. Because, I mean, while my damage is good, it's been upped twice. It's still, it's not phenomenal. It's not what I want to be going into the last uh, two floors with. The last two floors being the cathedral and the new floor that I'll be able to show off, hopefully. So, I, I mean, I definitely don't want to go into those with this damage. It's doable, but it's difficult. Like, significantly more difficult than it should be. Because with this setup, once I have the Polaroid, I should be in a position to uh, win guaranteed as opposed to uh, have to work for my win. I would like more soul hearts though. The miter, again, should be making me get more soul heart drops, and maybe it is. See, this is what I hate about knights. I don't remember when the AI was changed, but I, it was, and it, it sucks. Because look at it, it just turns around whenever it pleases, whenever is inconvenient for you. <sighs> but we're down to one. See, this is that's all wrong. Stop doing that. Stop that. Quit cheating, knight. Alright, I have enough bombs. 
the sun, great tarot card. Shows the full map. Um, gives you full health, but that doesn't work for me because I don't have any red hearts. So I don't technically have a full health. Um, and activates like the Necronomicon, doing a ton of damage to all the enemies in the room. So, I mean, it's pretty much guaranteed to be the best tarot card in the game in 99% of situations. Although a lot of the times I'd rather have, like, Hierophant or the Judgment card or something like that. So, it is Greed, as I predicted. Which really sucks. Well, I took three hits there. That was kind of sad. Still can't see my health. I'm, I don't want to take the time to play this. So I'm just not going to. Uh, and this room's really easy. Oh, look, more money. Just what I need. Uh, we finally get to the second item room. And take damage from leapers. As long as I avoid the pink leaper, it should be alright. Because the pink leaper, those shots do a full heart of damage instead of just a half a heart. So it worked out. Let's see what's in here. Nothing of value. It's funny because money should always be something of value. Uh, so this is the remote detonator. Just lets you uh, choose when to detonate your bombs. So you place a bomb and then you use that and it'll detonate when you use it. But I only picked it up because it gives you five bombs. So that's, that's pretty much what you should do with every bomb item except Mr. Boom. Just pick it up even if you don't want it. I mean, I don't think that there's going to be any downside to picking up Mr. Mega Homing Bombs or um, uh, Bob's Curse. Because, I mean, all of them make your tiers better or make your bombs better and give you five bombs. So, I mean, it's more of a tip for remote detonator specifically because even if you have a better spacebar item, you should pick it up and then drop it just because of the five free bombs. And this is a relatively annoying room, but it, it shouldn't... Uh, I shouldn't have taken damage there. I'm too fast for my own good, clearly. Alright, let's pop this chest. And, of course, I get just more, more money. And I just used my D20 uselessly then. Bombs are good, though. I'm exploring all the rooms because I want soul hearts. But I seem to be taking more damage than I'm uh, recovering or gaining. Still, Polaroid, once we collect it after the mom fight, will make us invincible every time we take a hit for you know, a few seconds. So I shouldn't really be using my keys the way I am, but I'm going to use this key anyway. And we get a key back, so it's it's all good for the most part. Easy rooms with guts, I like those. <clears throat> but uh, pretty much, we want to have at least four keys um, when we beat the cathedral. If we beat the cathedral. I'm not saying it's a definite. It's definitely... Not a definite. But uh, hopefully it can become a definite after these next two boss drops. Because I certainly shouldn't be losing against Mom or Mom's Heart. Or whatever the boss is for the uh, Wound Part 1. So I'm going to reroll all of that. What does this pill do? Range down. Well, that's unfortunate. I'm going to use this... Wrong choice. So, uh, pretty much, I need to start saving keys, but after, um, after this floor, without item rooms or shops, keys will just kind of start piling up, because I won't really have use for them in the womb or cathedral for the most part. So that range down pill wasn't actually that bad. I had gotten a range up from the halo and the uh, shot speed up, so it's not it's not that bad. I'm taking a lot of a lot of damage. Wow, this is actually astounding. I didn't know I could take this much damage. I need to focus on dodging more than I have been. Clearly, 
Uh, so this is an easy room, hopefully. Hopefully I won't take any damage. I can one-shot all of the flies that they'll spawn except pooters, which will go down quickly thanks to uh, Brother Bobby's help. I wouldn't mind another familiar. I really wouldn't. Like, Little Gish would be my ideal familiar. Uh, what you got? Bombs are key. Well, now I don't have to worry about my key situation. Okay, so this is a pretty free boss fight. I'm just going to do this for the whole fight. Just goad him into shooting a laser on one side, then goad him into shooting it on the other side. You can do this ad infinitum. And it'll be great. You'll win, you won't take hits unless you're uh, as careless as I sometimes am. And when you have high knockback, it does, it does increase the chance of getting hit, just because you might knock him down somewhere or something where his uh, laser will unexpectedly be able to hit you. And see, this fight could be a lot faster, which is why I say um, I want more damage. So we get a range up, which makes up for the range down pill. Oh look, I can shoot all the way across the room now. Good enough. So I'm probably going to make use of the sun card on this boss fight. Once a few more enemies have spawned. Just because, I mean, I really don't care that much, basically. Let's just use it now. Should uh, have done most of the damage for me, yep. And that's the fight. We get the Polaroid, which is going to be great for us, and we get Pageant Boy, which is the most useless item in the game, almost. It's pretty much the worst boss item I could have gotten at that very moment. Like, it is the worst, quite literally. And so we're on to the womb, though, and that is uh, what counts. Looks like we're getting uh, Curse or the Utero, or just Utero or something. Hopefully Curse of Labyrinth, because I have a compass. <sighs> But now we wait, because the game always has to freeze. We'll, get, we'll then get the pink screen glitch, probably, and then we can finally get on our way. So, yeah. Pink screen, like I said. And what do we got? Oh, no, don't tell me I freeze. Okay, I didn't freeze it again. And we did get Curse of the Labyrinth, which just means that... Once I find one boss, I've found both of them, and I don't have to worry about uh, doing a second floor. Because, I mean, Womb XL is one of the best floors simply because uh, once, well, basically, you have to do less than one floor's worth of rooms in a lot of cases to fight both bosses and clear both floors. Uh, yeah, definitely don't need the. <laughs> Whatever. Whatever, Binding of Isaac. So, uh, this is going to be the effect of the Polaroid. Every time we get hit, we're going to get invincibility like that. And pretty much we just have to make the most of it at that time. And not get hit again, because, I mean, everything here does a full heart of damage. And I can't afford that. I haven't been gaining much health. I need to maintain. So, Envy is really annoying, especially when there are two of them. But if things get too uh, hot for me, I can just chill over a rock for a bit until I have an opening to uh, swoop in and murder everyone. But uh, this seems I don't have much control over uh, what I'm shooting. So I'm probably going to be completely overwhelmed by the amount of envy heads that are on the screen at any given time. So pretty much going to spend all of my time like in a corner here kind of deal where I'll just chill on top of some rocks when something gets near me or just not do that and get hit instead because that sounds more appealing and smarter. I can see my health again and that is terrible. It's definitely not a situation I want to find myself in and I don't have enough bombs or anything to blow up the... Uh, rocks in any room to see if they're tinted rocks. I took a lot of hits there. So do we think it's up? I think it's up. So we're going up. Jeez, that traveled fast. Uh, so yeah, I'm totally not going to guarantee that I can beat Isaac. Hopefully I can, but 
I don't know. It's definitely a deteriorating situation by the second, pretty much. So, pretty much, I do want to fight any boss other than death here. Definitely would love to fight the Fallen. Like, the Fallen might be the best boss for my situation. All this useless money. Unless the Fallen... Unless I do fight the Fallen and he drops money equals power. That'd be great. Then I'd have a lot of extra damage. Wow, I can't believe that hit me. Um, you know, as strong as this run was looking, I'd say it's looking less and less strong as I continue taking stupid damage nonstop. Of course, I can say I did make the right choice in abandoning the Umheart because I have no use for the Umheart now. And I haven't for a while. Alright, Soul Hearts, that's what I need to see. Red Hearts is not what I need to see. So we fight Conquest, which is a useless boss for me, and is going to be extra difficult. Pretty much, Conquest, uh, I mean, he's going to drop the White Pony, and that's going to be totally useless. And I'm also going to hit him into myself a lot, and probably nearly or die. Nearly die or die. Uh, so I am actually invincible, even though you can't see the shield around me. But really, uh, White Pony, totally useless. The White Pony is a uh, flight and uh, spacebar effect that's just uh, a charge and some beams from heaven. I always get hit by his psychic shots, his homing shots. Really, I'm, I'm probably not going to die on this fight, but I'm probably not going to win now. Alright, get on top of the rocks. Beams can't hit you there. Every time! I really wish I had Poison Touch. Poison Touch would make everything so great. Yeah, I actually didn't get hit by freaking homing shots. What a surprise. Okay, we won there. And I mean... The White Pony might be more valuable than the D20. I'm going to get a D20 charge by killing Mom here, and then I'm probably going to go ahead and take the uh, White Pony. Oh my goodness, how did that hit me? So I'm really, really screwed here. Like, there is no doubt I'm going to die before I get to show off the uh, new floor. Which is really unfortunate, because I was totally set up for success there, just based on the fact that um, I have enough keys. And usually the uh, items you'll get in there are not terrible. Like, usually they will be some sort of boon for you. Okay, go use that. Kill one of the Larry Juniors. And there's the other. Use bomb here, and it won't be useful. So pretty much, I'll just be out of bombs and be sad. So now, everything goes to avoiding damage. It's the top priority. I have three and a half hearts, that's four hits before I die. But I'm doing practically no damage. And that's what I hate when you get like a really strong first floor based on everything. I had a ton of health. I had uh, really good damage for the beginning of the game. Two damage ups. It's always, always a good sign at the start of the game. But then I didn't get any more. And I actually just got hit. That really sucks. Still, um, I can't remember the last time I died on Mom's heart. I may have died on the womb, but not on Mom's heart. Knights. Knights suck. Like I was talking about earlier. Turn on a dime AI. Hey, look at that. I wasn't even close. They had no reason to be looking for me there. Or there. But, uh, last one's easy. I thought he would die there. Okay. So Mom's heart is almost half dead. 
which is really, really pathetic. My damage output is so bad. Quite astounding, to be honest. Duke of Flies is a really easy boss, though, especially when I can one-shot the flies. I still, uh, like I was saying, have no chance of success on this run. Well, okay, that's not true. I have a very small chance of success based on a couple of very unlikely occurrences. Almost got hit there. So we're halfway through the fight when Chubb spawns. That's really bad. Usually I like to kill Mom's Heart before or while Chubb is spawning. So, uh, I mean, definitely went from this was going to be a good run to this is a bad run. It's storming out, so uh, hopefully I don't lose power. That would really suck. So knights again. Just got to focus on them one at a time. I hear thunder. So that means there's probably lightning. I don't know how close it is. Because I'm not... My window isn't open. Like my shades are... Hold shut. Kind of deal. But uh, we're going to try to finish this run real quick. Of course winning the whole game. But that's not going to happen, I must say. <sighs> so I'm feeling kind of like maybe I should have taken Tammy's head. Because the D20 has definitely not, not pulled its weight. Because like I was saying, the D20 is most useful in an arcade. Alright, so Mom's Heart is finally shooting bombs repeatedly. And that will uh, aid us more than it will harm us, I'd say. Because it'll kill the, own, the enemies that uh, Mom's Heart is spawning. And it stays down instead of uh, making us wait to shoot at it. So we can shoot at it constantly and not worry about it. Unless we're trying to avoid things like chargers. But if I leave that charger alone and just doesn't get killed for any reason, it's free shots in Mom's Heart without it shooting any more shots. Uh, so the Devil Room will not have anything but a pathway to shoal. So let's see, there's one heart here and one heart here. Whatever. Let's just reroll that. We got one soul heart from last room and we'll take the white pony even though half of its uh, whole worth is completely gone on us because we already have flight. So it looks like we're going down here. Soul heart, that's really valuable. Uh, free room, I like free rooms. And, uh, well, this could be tough. Tricky more than tough, but tough nonetheless. <laughs> I hope that it was amusing. Uh, yeah, that's bad damage, but now I don't have to worry about getting hit. I can just keep shooting. Oh, man. I am completely screwed. Three hits on Isaac with really bad damage output. And I'm, I'm shooting a decent amount of tears. I'm just going to die. So that didn't do much, and uh, yeah, this is not going to be close, I'd say. Even with all this invincibility, I've taken two hits already, and again, I get Isaac shooting a lot of tears at me. I have no items rotating around me, yeah, that, that's, that's that. So uh, thanks for watching, I think I'm playing Isaac next time since I've had a great rate of success with him. But I'll see you next time.